Hello guys, um, I am going to do a tutorial on my pastel alcohol ink marble. Um, I'm doing this because we've done a live on it, but it's been a while and I've had a lot of people asking me uh, about this particular cup, so I am going to um, do that for you today. What you will need is a cup painted white, flat, um, white works best with alcohol inks, and you will need, for the pastel colors, you can use brighter colors, this is your marble, you can do what you want, um, but I use um, all Ranger inks, pink sherbet, cloudy blue, cool peri, and then I do my veining with the rose gold mixative. Um, the veining really makes the marble, so it's kind of an important step, but you have to be careful with it. You'll also need um, a makeup sponge. This is actually an alcohol ink sponge um, that goes with an applicator. I don't like use to, to use the, the wooden applicator, but I do prefer to use these sponges. I don't know, it just seems to give me better. I always try to start with a new sponge because alcohol activates the alcohol ink. So once um, the sponge is, the inks are dried in the sponge, if you go to use it again, the first thing that's going to happen when you use it is it's going to wake up all of the inks that are in there and it's going to um, color with the co combination of all of the inks that you've got in there along with your fresh ink, so that's not always the most desirable thing. So I usually start with a fresh sponge every time. Um, so all this is is so easy. I always keep a, a little bottle of alcohol on hand just in case I need to thin or change something. So it, this is just such an easy, classy, beautiful technique um, that I love to do and have done a lot of. So first I'm going to open all of my actual inks. I don't need my rose gold just yet. We don't need that until the end. And then I'm just going to start and I'm going to put a dab or two of a drop or two of ink on there. And then I'm just going to dab it out with my sponge. And I'm just going to keep doing that and randomly um, place and feather it out. And there will be places where it overlaps. It'll be... A color shift you use the same sponge for the whole thing helps with blending and you get different colors and shades see there's a little bit of a purple line in there now where I've got both of them and you just keep dabbing until it's blended so long as it's wet it'll keep blending I'll throw some cool Perry over here I try to when I take my lids off because the lids are all the same and it gets really hard to tell which lid goes on which thing to always put my inks in the same spot so that I know what lid goes with what. That's a little light there, so I'm going to just put some more in there and let it sit for a second and see how it just spreads out. And just dab it a little bit more concentrated so you can see the light, light purple. This is pastels, so we want to make sure if you're doing pastels to keep it pastel um, as you go. We're, I'm only working with three colors, so it's kind of important to randomize here. We have some big, big areas and some little areas, and make sure you're blending in where. Like that'll take a little more blending because I don't want such an obvious line. But when you do have lines. Um, you follow those lines with your veining and it just gives you a natural place to put a vein where the two colors are meeting. And see, so you can just blend. I added a little bit more of the pink and now it's blended out. So it's not, it's a, it's a blended line, not a solid line like it is there, but I'm gonna keep that there so I can use that for my veining. I'll throw some blue down here and you just keep going and keep building. Oh, well, that's not blue, that's Perry. And my whole lecture on um, 
putting things back where they belong with their lids kind of gone already because I just kind of start picking up and putting down things but I do try to keep them level because I have accidentally put a dark purple lid onto a white alcohol ink and so the tip of my white alcohol ink is very purple so I try to be very careful about that And even within the colors, see I've got that blue here and blue here and I have this little line here. I am good with that. Make that a little bit bigger a spot. I love working with these inks because they just are fun to work with. There's so many things you can do and they seem to have a mind of their own and this starts to look like a cloud and you just kind of go with it and let it go and do its thing. while working to achieve your vision. But I like that that's kind of all modeled right there. I'm sorry I can't zoom my camera and I can never remember where my camera is. But it's all modeled and light blue and it looks kind of cloudy. I love that. I'll throw some pink in there. Alcohol ink is a replacer, so it will be, I'm using the same thing, and it will, the inks in there will color the pink a little bit. But it just starts to blend out the pink. You don't want it to run around too, too much. You want to stay as much, see that's, that's, more purple than pink because there was the blue right there that was still kind of active so now we're getting more of the pink color this is actually my most ordered kind of cup is these alcohol ink marbles I've done them in bright colors like um, Oh, wild plum and amethyst and uh, purple twilight and Baja blue. I've done that one a few times as well, and it's stunning and gorgeous. But it's not. I love the the soft, soft softness of doing the pastels. Don't forget your bottoms. Don't ever forget your bottoms. That's just what I'm doing over here because I'm off camera. I want to take this purple cloud over here. It's just about being random. You don't want just a big blob of one particular color. And if every now and then you have to go, oh, well, that's getting a little too dark for the wrong color, I can just add a little bit of alcohol and it'll blend it through. Well, maybe hit a spot that needs that. Come in, come in here. I'll put some cool fairy over here. And there's always some degree of color mixing.
or this one over here. It's just a matter of using your eyes and looking to see where it looks balanced because you want balance between the three colors. No matter what, you still want it to look good, but you don't want too, too much of any one given color. I'm going to take this purple all the way down here in one spot. Again, you can just use a makeup sponge for this. You can use um, I wouldn't use a paper towel or something like that because a paper towel is just going to absorb your um, inks and it's going to leave texture on your piece. So you don't really want that. That's not so desirable. If ever there's anything you guys want to see me do with alcohol inks, just let me know. Drop me a message. If I've not yet done it, I will try it and do an experiment and get back to you on it and we can figure it out. When I did the live, one of the people who was watching the live actually bought the cup. So that was kind of fun. Okay. So that's blue and pink there. So I'm going to add the purple over here. It's okay that it kind of connects with here because it's just a flow and it's only three colors. It's not like. doing 10 of them or something. Oops, that's not where I wanted that. I didn't want. Okay, so here I just put purple. I didn't want purple because I've got purple over here and it's completely surrounding. I wanted my blue, but they're very close in color. So I'm just going to put that over top. Let it spread for a second so that it can kind of start its process because it's always more vibrant when it can dry on its own. So it just makes it a little bit darker. And voila, it's just, it's blue now. Easy peasy. Alcohol ink is so easy to work with. It can be a little temperamental, but it's easy to control when you are able to let go and let it do its own thing and you figure out how. It's just like when you're applying glitter, you need to know how it's going to react when you put it a certain way. So if you hold it high up, how it's going to fall on your cup. You don't hold things high up, but you figure out how the ink is going to react with the circumstances around it. So I'm going to throw some blue up here. And like I said, you can go back into over what's already there. It just helps to blend it and give you some good color combinations in between like you're doing an ombre. Okay, and I want some pink over here. Doesn't have to be uniform anything. This is very much a random process here.
thoughtfully random. It's funny that I've done so many of these pastel-y colored ones that um, the first order I got for bright colors, it really threw me for a loop because I hated it. It's like, why did you do this to me? And uh, I ended up loving it when I was done it, after the epoxy all got on it and everything, but I, the bright colors just threw me and I did not like it. I'm just going to follow, the, oops, follow this up. Because of the blue right there. I just, I just love, oh, I love doing this. You just get so much depth and movement to your, your pieces this way. because there's texture to it a little bit. See how when I put it on there it started pulling back? Just keep at that spot when that happens. Just keep dab dab dabbing and eventually it fills back in. So it's not that white spot anymore. The first time that happened to me I freaked out a little bit because it was taking all of the ink below it off because alcohol ink will always, because it's got alcohol in it, so alcohol will um, interact with the ink. So even if it's dry, it interacts with it and it wakes it back up. And make sure if you're going to leave lines that they aren't sharp, kind of linear lines so that they're more mimicked, mimicking what's happening in nature. Because you want it to look like the marble you're trying to imitate here. something so classy and so elegant about these cups and yet they're just actually really super super easy to do Don't no, don't run. There we go. I always find these things so awkward because it feels like I'm talking to myself. Okay, and so I think this last spot, I'll just put a little bit of purple in here. I 
always, always. Well, I try to always wear my gloves and put paper down on my table because you don't want to see what my table looks like under my paper. Um, because these things are messy and they stain and I really don't want to be walking around with these colors all over my hands. Okay, so I want to... I'm not real happy with the coloring right here, so I'm just going to add a little bit of purple in here and see what happens. And look, just like that, I've changed it. You can also, if, let me find this. Okay, this, this here spot is just a little darker than the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick some alcohol just on the, just plain, just on the, the spot that's not covered with ink yet. And I'm going to dab along the edge and see what it does. It'll lighten it up in those areas as you blend it out. That's probably lightened a little too much, but see it's wiped out the color. So now I can do that and go a little bit lighter as I blend it out. And apparently get rid of my purple. But you can do that. You can fix. I didn't really need to fix that, but you can fix the way things look with just a little drop of alcohol. And there it completely just changed that section of the cup because it was all of this color and now it's like that. So now you're just going to do a look around and see if there's anything else that you want to change. I'm going to say no. So what I'm going to do, let's put these lids back on. Exactly adhere to my rule, but I remembered which one went where, so that's okay. I'll just leave that open. I'm going to shake up my mixative. You can hear there's a little ball in there. All of the metallics um, have that, and you need to shake them up really good. What I'm going to grab, I have this white tile and that apparently is a little dusty so I need to clean that off. I'll just take some alcohol and give it a wipe. I'm going to show you one day what I do with these tiles besides this thing that I'm about to do right now. I'm finished with that so that's all nice and clean. It's just shaking up really well. to take just two drops for now. I think that's probably all I'm going to need of the mixative and I'm going to take a toothpick. And this is hard to do with a glow on so I'm going to take my glow off. So the trick is the trick is to rotate the toothpick in between your fingers while you are very gently dragging it down your cup. So I'll show you, I'm gonna get just a little bit of this ink on the tip of my Q-tip. See, see I got just a little bit there and it's really hard to show you this except the way my, if you watch my fingers, 
I just rotate it back and forth along what looks like a natural good line. And so it'll kind of bounce around a little bit and it looks a lot more natural than just drawing a line. And then I'll take a little bit and branch off the side because if you look at marble just do little little branches off there's usually not just a straight line I'm gonna do the underneath of my cup here because I have this really nice line right here and I'm going to follow it along And bring it up over here and we'll just add just another little vein coming off of that a little vein maybe coming off of that and it's just about finding the spot for it because you have to find the right spots and you need to be conscious of where you may perhaps Put a name and you can vary your pressure so you have a skinny line that goes into a fat line or a fat line that goes into a skinny line uh, put one here and you don't want to cover your whole cup with these you want these to be an accent you don't want them to be the whole cup so you have just these pretty little metallic lines that run through. your cut, And don't make them all go the same direction. It's kind of like watermelon seeds on a watermelon cup. All one direction, all one size, all one thickness. It doesn't look right when all is said and done. So I'm going to do this one. I'm go like this. And turn it, and it's okay if there's little gaps in the line. That's okay. And do that. And do that. So I have. A, a quite natural kind of veining in there and this only just takes two drops of ink one if you're really frugal about it so I'm not going to do one right here in this area because this is probably around where I might put a name so this one goes that way. So this one's going to come and do one this way. I need more. I need more. Okay. I just want just enough. And so there's a little bit in each kind of section here. So I'm gonna follow that around. And where did that come from? Follow that around. And I'm gonna do it down here. And I come off of it this way here. By just rotating your toothpick, you're getting it out of your head, draw a line. Because that's, I'm a bookkeeper by trade, so that's very much my MO. So I think, I think that I have just enough veining, because if I put a name on here, it is going, this is rose gold ink. I'm going to use a champagne or rose gold um, vinyl, 
which will really set it off. And I'm going, to, when I ex epoxy it, I'm going to throw on um, some ultra fine or eco glitter or like a cheek glitter that's going to just give it just a bit of a shimmer um, and not not make it glittered, but just, just shimmer it a little bit. Um, so there you go. That is how I do my alcohol ink pastel marble. Hope you enjoyed.